a potentially big move is coming for SeaWorld Entertainment. So first off, read this disclaimer carefully and do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So we go here to the economic signals and we have a, a theme called holiday. So 124% here from the 52 week low, which is massively outperforming the S&P 500. And so we have a decent mix here. Uh, so SeaWorld Entertainment, they are in the aqua theme park business. Uh, and it is the top per performer. So 304% here from the low, uh, minus 6% uh, uh, pullback. I have uh, analyzed uh, one of these uh, stocks, uh, you know, relatively recently, and that was TripAdvisor. Uh, you see that I did the analysis um, here in March, and uh, in that instance, I was feeling, you know, bearish for TripAdvisor, and we have definitively seen uh, a significant haircut. So, even though the uh, overall indexes have been making you know new highs uh, since then it goes to show you that there are bullish opportunities everywhere but also bearish opportunities so you can really have a mix of both and be profitable in um, in both uh, directions and be nicely hedged okay so here is SeaWorld uh, Parks and, and Entertainment's website yeah, nice. So uh, you see that uh, I know they have uh, they have all kinds of stuff here. Uh, so it's not just purely um, you know they're um, you know watching some uh, some uh, whales uh, jump around. You know uh, this they they have a broader portfolio portfolio. Nice website um, and yeah um, I like um, I like parks. So here's the chart. C's is the ticker. These are weekly data points. Uh, it certainly is the case that this rising phase was much, 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 much stronger than uh, expected. However, when we do look here at the seasonality for seas, May is uh, the strongest month. April is also very strong, but you can see how dramatic the change here is from May to June. I mean, this and these are many years, and this is real price data. This, this is the reality on the ground. Just implosion. So June. So the coming months basically are very, very weak for uh, SeaWorld. So there, there definitively is this, uh, okay, not, not really buy the rumors, uh, uh, sell the news, but kind of as well, because um, you know, less sophisticated investors, they might think that SeaWorld is one of those stocks that it makes sense to buy in June, you know, because, oh, it's the summer holidays, but this seasonality that we saw now, it is a great example of how the market is forward looking. So the people who were in buying, you know, the holiday trade, they bought it no way earlier in this year. So yeah, so yeah a very interesting illustrative point. Uh, so we were recently overbought on the RSI, PPO at a very high level, and those are also, you know, some, some, um, some, some potential catalysts uh, to the downside. Here, looking at the daily data points, PPL, RSI elevated levels. If we zoom in a bit here, we do have a bit of a, of a messy technical pattern that it does have something a, potentially a bit head and shoulder-ish about it. Uh, the shoulders are a bit broad. Um, so um, the, the bears definitively do not want um, more rally here because uh, that could because if we do close above you know the head then that will temporarily well it will basically neutralize the pattern and to gauge the odds of that happening we need to look at additional data so we go here to finvis they draw you know the the trend lines we were we were rejected here from the upper end of the trend uh, trend line bounced to the lower end so the, and the lower end has been very solid as a support. The analyst price target is $61.50 and that is it, that $61.50 uh, that would be a breakout. So we go here, uh, so the analysts they do suggest a 14% upside approximately. And if we go here to uh, sax.com they do have a number to buy but there is an F value, F growth but a momentum. Industry rank bottom 36% 
leisure and recreational services. So it certainly seems like the broader broader category here of leisure and recreational recreational services stocks, you know, the reason why they are in the bottom 36% is because there's, you know, a disconnect between the price and, you know, the, the um, yeah, business metrics. Um, yeah. So yeah, most likely the reason is uh, that we have seen just um, yeah, a too big of a move to the upside. There's no dividend, market cap 4.2 billion US dollars. So yeah, some, some size to the company. So to sum up my take here for our SeaWorld Entertainment. Okay, so the theme, you know, uh, holidays, uh, it, is, you know, it is one of those themes that you know we tend to see uh, a move uh before the summer because you know it is all it is all, the market is forward looking hence it's not simply that sea world um has a tendency to go down in the summer months but also some uh you know various other you know holiday stocks so far we haven't really seen any significant breakdown here in the sea world stock the time cycle suggested that we actually should already have had um, a meaningful pullback. You could argue that this move here was uh, that pullback and that, you know, a new rising phase is, is basically in the development. I mean, that would be what the time cycle suggests. Suggest. But the seasonality is so, str so fiercely uh, negative towards the coming month. And that drastically reduces the probability that we will see, you know, a strong rising phase for the coming months. Uh, you know, that would just be, uh, it would be just something we haven't seen in the history of this stock. So the odds definitively favor that the seasonality uh, is going to, um, yeah, be stronger here than the time cycles. The technical indicators were, were definitively not sending us any, you know, deep technical value uh, buying opportunity. Um, it's it's rather overextended. Uh, looking here at history of the weekly RSI, it is rare for us to stay uh, overbought. And the PPL was at, is at a very, very, very high level. Uh, the fundamentals were mixed. Uh, the analyst price targets were definitively more they were bullish. Uh, they do suggest a breakout of, uh, that would neutralize uh, the head and shoulder, the, the potential, you know, broad head and shoulders pattern that we are developing. And then again, Sachs uh, showed, you know, through the value and the, the growth scores in particular, in particular that this is, you know, the growth and value investors are simply not going to buy, you know, an F value and an F growth stock. And when we do see that the technicals are not supportive of a really strongly bullish, uh, you know, move. That's interesting. Um, when we see here that the seasonality has a bearishly interesting. Uh, when we see that, you know, fundamental fundamentals, at least just to an extent, has a more of a bearish lean. Then overall, I think it makes more sense to look for bearish opportunities than bullish.